So we're asked to find the volume created by rotating the region enclosed by e to the x plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1 about the y-axis. So we'll start by drawing our graph of e to the x plus 1, which is the graph of e to the x shifted up by 1. Now this is going to be bound by the y-axis, and then also x equals 0, and x equals 1. So here's our region here, and we can actually get rid of our piece of graph over there. So that region is getting rotated about the y-axis. So if we think about how that rotation is going to look, it's going to come this way, and that's going to be our solid. <clears throat> what we notice then is we have places where the solid will be complete, but then there will also be this area in here where the solid will have an empty uh, spot. So we're probably going to want to split this into two integrals. And where we're going to split it is going to be where that happens, right here. Well, this thing hits the y-axis when x is 0, so this happens here at y equals 2. And that's where we will split, the, split up our integral. Now since we're going around the y-axis, if we were to take a slice right there, notice we get a delta y for our slice. So that means we need the function in terms of, in terms of y. So we need to find the inverse here, which we can do to our original function. So we get y minus 1 equals e to the x, and then using what we know about natural logs, x equals ln natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1. Now, that won't be a problem for our limits, so we won't need the absolute value. We'll see that here in a second. Now, let's do our two integrals. The first one's nice because it's basically just a cylinder. So we need to do pi times our radius squared. And our radius doesn't change for this bottom part. Here's our radius here. It's always going to be one unit. So the first integral, as we start to do this volume, is going to be the integral. Now we're going in terms of y, so y is going to range from 0 up to 2, because that's where we saw it changing. Pi times our radius squared, which is just 1 dy. Now we are going to have a second integral and this is going to have that form of the inside minus the outside. Now our big radius goes from here to here and doesn't change no matter where we are. So we can see that this is going to go have a large radius, so let's put in pi now, and our large radius is going to be once again 1 and that's squared. Our small radius that we have to subtract out is from the curve to the axis, which is what we just found. So minus ln of y minus 1, the quantity squared, dy. And now we need our limits. We know that the lower y value is going to be 2. The upper y value we need to find, it's going to be this intersection point, well we know that's where x equals 1. So this is the point 1 and then if we plug that in our function e plus 1. So there is our upper limit. So we now have our integral set up. Now with the ln of y minus 1, the quantity squared, we get something a little bit tricky there because we get something that we can't calculate with an antiderivative. So, this first integral is nice and simple, but the second one we would need to calculate with technology. You can use Wolfram Alpha, Graphing Calculator, or any of those programs. But that's how we could set up this integral.